When former Transport Minister S. Iswaran was charged with corruption and multiple other offences last week, his alleged accomplice was not hauled to court alongside him despite being named in almost all the 27 charges. Iswaran is accused of obtaining items worth more than 384,000 Singapore dollars, 287,000 US dollars from billionaire hotelier Ong Beng Seng, such as Singapore F1 Grand Prix tickets and a paid-for trip to Doha. Some of these were allegedly in exchange for advancing Mr Ong's business interests. Both men were arrested on July 11 last year and investigated by the Corrupt Practices Investigation Bureau. In response to media queries on why Mr Ong has not been prosecuted yet, the Attorney General's Chambers AGC said it will decide on the investigations against him and others after the Eswaran case is completed, including the presentation of evidence in court. CNA speaks to legal experts and lawyers on the possible reasons behind AGC's move and what powers the prosecution has. Lawyers told CNA that prosecutors can decide whether to charge someone, when to charge them and what charges to bring against them. Under the Criminal Procedure Code, the Attorney General, who also serves as the public prosecutor in Singapore, has discretion over the control and direction of criminal prosecutions and proceedings. This means that the prosecution is under no legal obligation to bring charges within any specific time frame and can choose to do so whenever it is ready, said Mr Alexander Woon. A law lecturer at the Singapore University of Social Sciences who practices at RHT Law Asia. This is necessary because investigations sometimes take a long time, possibly years, especially for complex white-collar cases. Added Mr Woon, who is also a former deputy public prosecutor. Nevertheless, he noted that the prosecution is obliged to act in the public interest. An accused person must be given due process and prosecuted in a timely manner, while the prosecution must also do so to vindicate the rights of victims and show the public that justice is being done. The prosecution should not abuse its discretion for merely tactical reasons. Mr. Woon added. It is also not unusual for accused persons in a case to be charged at different times. If the prosecution withholds charging, these people may cooperate and help convict the person who has already been charged, said Farallon Loss Managing Director Nicholas Tang. If both the giver and receiver of a corrupt gift are charged, they would not want to incriminate themselves when giving evidence during a trial said Mr Tang. This is especially so when evidence alone is not enough for a conviction and the testimony of witnesses is necessary to explain the gifts. Associate Professor Mervyn Chong from the National University of Singapore NUS said that AGC would also be able to better focus the court's attention on the intention of one accused person, whether they be the giver or receiver. Whether someone intended to be corrupt should be subjectively determined, based on objective facts. So, if more parties are involved, it could cause the case and trial to become unnecessarily complicated. Added the practicing lawyer from Advocators Law. He cited a previous corruption case where only one party was prosecuted. In 2014, law professor Tate Sun Hang was charged with obtaining sex and gifts from a student. But the student, the alleged giver, was not charged. She testified during the trial and Tay was sentenced to five months jail. His conviction was overturned on appeal when a high court judge found that the student's actions were not in return for better grades. Mr. Woon also cited a high-profile series of corruption cases that he worked on during his time at AGC. Six senior executives from shipbuilder ST Marine were charged in court at different times over 24 Singapore dollars. Nine million in bribes that were given to employees of ST Marine's customers. Investigations against accused persons may take varying lengths of time, said Mr. Woon. 
An accused person's defense counsel could also still be making representations to the prosecution. Such representations, which is an appeal to the prosecution, either verbally or in written form, can be made at any stage of the legal proceedings, including before someone is charged. Another possible, simpler reason is resource constraints. It is likely that there is a particular team of prosecutors handling a series of interconnected accused persons. These prosecutors cannot be everywhere at once, said Mr. Woon. They will often need to deal with one or two accused persons at a time before they have the capacity to deal with the next few. Lawyers say it is often better for defense counsel when all parties in a corruption case are charged at the same time. The courts would have a complete picture of what exactly happened, which means that the defense would know what the prosecution and co-accused persons would argue, said NUS Association Professor Chong. Mr. Tang from Farallon said there is generally no advantage for defense counsels if one party is charged before another. Those who have not been charged may cooperate with the authorities to testify against the charged party to avoid prosecution themselves. He added, When all parties are charged, their lawyers would want the option to cross-examine witnesses and potentially the other accused persons if they turn hostile, said Mr. Woon. That said, it is also sometimes advantageous for the defence if the prosecutions take place sequentially, especially if the earlier prosecutions fail. This can result in the charges against one's client being withdrawn before trial. When asked why AGC is holding off on whether to charge Mr. Ong until Eswaran's case is completed, Mr. Tang said the prosecution might want to assess the extent of the tycoon's cooperation with authorities. The team of prosecutors in Eswaran's case is led by Chief Prosecutor Tan Kiat Feng, while Eswaran is defended by a team led by Senior Counsel Devinder Singh. Pointing to AGC's statement, Mr. Tang noted that one of the key elements AGC will consider is what evidence Mr. Ong will give during Eswaran's trial. If the prosecution were to charge Mr. Ong at the same time as Eswaran, then there would be far less likely possibility of obtaining Mr. Ong's cooperation, he added. Mr. Ong could then choose to become uncooperative before and during Eswaran's trial so as not to incriminate himself any further since he has already been charged. Less evidence would then be available to prosecutors in Eswaran's case, said Mr. Tang. Hence, it is a matter of weighing priorities and considering the public interest. Among the charges that Eswaran faces are two under the Prevention of Corruption Act. For corruptly obtaining bribes from Mr. Ong in exchange for advancing his business interests. The Act imposes a presumption of corruption in certain cases, including Eswaran's case, due to his position as a cabinet minister at the time. Association Professor Chong said the burden is on Eswaran to prove, on a balance of probabilities, that he did not corruptly obtain gratification. This means that the prosecution could find the case against Eswaran to be more straightforward. When Eswaran defends himself and gives evidence about his interactions with Mr. Ong, the evidence could shed more light on whatever evidence, or not, that they currently have against Mr. Ong and perhaps, help their case against Mr. Ong become clearer, added Association Professor Chong. However, criminal lawyer Adrian Wee from Lighthouse Law said it was difficult to see why the prosecution Mr. needs to wait for Eswaran's case to conclude before deciding what to do with Ong. Mr. Wee wrote in a LinkedIn post, corruption requires that two or more parties come together to make a corrupt bargain. In coming to the view that Iswaran was bribed by Mr. Ong, the prosecution must also necessarily have come to the conclusion that Mr. Ong had bribed Iswaran. Mr. We further noted that Mr. Ong cannot decline to testify in Iswaran's trial.
given that he has not been charged in court. Accused persons have the option of remaining silent. Instead, he faces the prospect of a long wait while Iswaran's case plays out. All the while being subject to the opaque vagaries of prosecutorial discretion, Mr. Wee added.